yeah uh good evening students am i visible and audible can you able to see my screen and hear me yeah yes okay fine let's start with uh, today's revision so yeah okay okay kenilo and uh, uh, alima good so let's start with the uh, solutions so today we are going to take the solutions topic and we are going to revise this and solve the questions related to the topics that are there in this lesson the topics that we are going to cover here in this solutions lesson are the introduction the henry's law raoul's law ideal and non ideal solution and the four colligative properties and the van't hoff factor got it so let me just introduce the each and every topic so quickly and easily and then we will move on to the question coming to the introductory part so what is a solution solute and solvent give solution right when two or more chemically non reacting substances are mixed together forming a homogeneous mixture the mixture is called a solution so mostly the solute will be in the larger amount and uh, sorry the solvent will be in the larger amount and the solute will be in very lesser amount like sugar in water got it so this is about the solution now coming to henry's law the law states that the partial pressure of the gas in the vapor phase is proportional to the mole fraction of the gas in the solution so basically the henry's law is for gases okay the partial pressure that is the p is uh, proportional to the mole fraction mole fraction is denoted by the letter x okay partial pressure is directly proportional to the mole fraction and if you remove if you remove the proportionality symbol we have to introduce in constant right that is kh and it is called as henry's constant so when you increase the temperature of the gas the solubility will decrease and when you increase the pressure of the gas the solubility will increase like uh, for example if we are uh, uh dissolving if we are putting the carbon dioxide gas into the water okay it is soda right so the dissolve dissolution of carbon dioxide inside the water will increase when we increase the pre uh, pressure that's why we are sealing the container okay so on increasing the pressure solubility will also increase for uh, gases so these are the effects of temperature and pressure on this and this is the law that you have to uh, study now coming to the next law that is raoul's law raoul's law is basically for uh, liquids okay for a liquid liquid system for a solution of volatile liquid the partial vapor pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction more or less both the laws look same only partial pressure directly proportional to mole fraction that is the law that is henry is for gases and raoul's is for uh, liquids okay so here we are having two different components solute a and solute b and both are mixed together to form the solution here now the partial pressure you can see partial pressure of a is directly proportional to the mole fraction of a in the solution and partial pressure of b is directly proportional to the mole fraction of b so when you remove this proportionality symbol we are introducing this uh, p a not and p b not which are the constant and this p a not and p b not represents the vapor pressure of the pure component when you put uh, the not the zero here in the superscript it denotes the pure component okay now if we want to find out the total vapor pressure of the solution then what we have to do to find out this we have to add pa and pb right so here we are having pa and pb just to substitute these two values in the place of pa and pb here and you will get this formula so where xa plus xb is equal to 1 sum of the mole fraction x is the mole fraction right This is the mole fraction. Sum of the mole fraction is equal to one always. Got it? So this is a formula that you have to keep in mind. And coming to one more formula related to this Raoul's law, it is for the vapor phase component and for the liquid phase component. So from the Dalton's law, the partial pressure is equal to mole fraction and total pressure. Partial pressure is equal to mole fraction and total pressure now here mole fraction is represented by the letter y in the previous slide we have used x right and here it is y 
Now, if you add these two, Pa plus Pb, we are getting the total pressure. And this is in accordance with Dalton's law. OK. Now, uh, see here, Xa, Pa naught. So this relation we have got from the previous slide. And uh, this is from this uh, equation. So we are equating both Pas, P of the last slide and P of this slide. So here, Y represents the mole fraction vapor phase. And the X, as we have seen in the last line, it represents the mole fraction, the liquid phase. OK, so the total pressure into mole fraction in vapor phase is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure component into the mole fraction of the uh, component in liquid phase. OK, very important formula you have to keep in mind. Got it. So this is about the Raoult's law. And coming to the next topic, that is ideal and non-ideal solution. So ideal solution, as you can see, all the three graphs we have to study. And in case of ideal, all the interactions, AA interaction, BB interaction, and AB interaction, everything will be equal. Whereas in case of uh, non-ideal solution, they will not be equal. AA and BB interaction, they are very, very high compared to AB. And in for uh, non-ideal negative deviation, it is just the opposite. Okay, And all the delta H mix and delta V mix, they are equal to 0 here. And here, or everything is greater than 0 for positive deviation, lesser than 0 for negative deviation. And uh, all the examples are very important. Which among the following is the uh, examples for ideal solution? Like that, they will ask. So you need to, by heart, all the example pair they have given here. For under each solution. Got it? So this is about the thing. Just take the screenshot or note it down. This is the summary of ideal and non-ideal. Now next I will move on to the colligative property. Shall I move on to the colligative property? Did you all take the screenshot or the note of it? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So we have four colligative property. So all the four colligative property depends on a single concept only. So in all the thing, first we have to take a beaker and the beaker contains the component A, okay, which is a solvent, which is a solvent. And this solvent is a pure solvent, okay. It is a pure solvent and uh, the pure solvent exerts some pressure and that pressure is called as Pa0. This is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Now, this is volatile. This solvent is volatile in nature. Volatile means it will evaporate. Okay. And to this A, I am going to add a component B, which is a non volatile solute. B is a non volatile solute. Now, A plus B gives a solution, right? To a solvent, I'm adding a solute and I'm getting a solution. Now the vapor pressure of the solution changes. And how it is going to affect the vapor pressure? And how it is going to affect the boiling point? And how it is going to affect the freezing point of the system? So that is what we are going to study here in this colligative property. Okay. So the first colligative property is the relative lowering of vapor pressure. So the pure solvent has some vapor pressure. And that vapor pressure is getting lowered because of the addition of the non-volatile solute. OK, so when a non-volatile solute is dissolved in a pure solvent, the vapor pressure of the solvent is lowered. OK, so the solution vapor pressure is always lower than the pure solvent. So this is the definition for this. And according to Raoult's law, we are getting this relation and this Na plus Nb. So this is the number of moles of the solute, small n is the number of moles of the solute. And uh, this capital N is the number of moles of the solvent. OK, now this term is approximately equated to capital Na because the number of moles of solute is very, very less compared to the solvent. So that's why it is neglected. And it is approximated to this. And at last, we are getting the change in the pressure formula. Got it? So this is very important. Just take it. I will move on to the next property that is elevation in boiling point. Now, to the same thing, to a pure solvent, when a non volatile solute is dissolved in a pure solvent, its vapor pressure is decreased. That's what we have uh, seen in the last colligative property. 
and the boiling point increases. So why it increases? Why there is an increase? So already a solvent is there. So that would be some boiling point for the solvent. Now on the addition of the solute, the system contains now A plus B. System now contains A plus B. Now it is a solution. So both has to get mixed with each other and then only they will boil. What happens? The boiling point will increase, right? So that is called as elevation in boiling point. The difference of boiling point of the solution in pure solvent is called as elevation in boiling point and it is denoted by the letter delta Tb and it is equal to Tb minus Tb0. Tb is the boiling point of the solution and Tb0 is the boiling point of the pure solvent. Always this zero denotes the pure component. Okay, so you have to take this relation, which is very important. Now I will move on to the graph that you should know about this elevation that I will show you. So this is the graph, was a temperature versus vapor pressure. Now here you see, this is Tb0. This is the point of the temp boiling temperature of the pure solvent, boiling temperature of the pure solvent. Okay, now on addition of the solute, the system is forming the solution. And now you see here the temperature is increased. This is the temperature, boiling temperature of the solution. So it is increased to some units. Okay, now the change is denoted by delta Tb. So always the change is equal to final minus initial, right? So final is Tb and initial is Tb0. So that is why we are getting this type of relation. Okay. Now, this change in this temperature, it is also related to molality. And if you remove that uh, proportionality symbol, you have to introduce the Kb constant. Kb is called as molal elevation constant. It is called as molal elevation constant or it is called as ebullioscopic constant. It is called as ebullioscopic constant. Okay. And uh, we all know that molality is equal to what is molality? Number of moles of solute by mass of solvent in mass of solvent in kilogram, right? So we are substituting this particular relation here and we are getting this final formula. Okay. Find out number of moles is again equal to mass by molar mass. Substituting all those things, we are getting this. Got it? I will move on to the third uh, colligative property that is depression in freezing point. So when a non-volatile solute is dissolved in a pure solvent, its vapor pressure decreased. Freezing point is also decreasing. So here initially, initially the temperature of the system is uh, Tf0. Okay. And Tf is the freezing point of the solution. Okay. Which temperature is very less? Which temperature is very less? Tf is very less. Freezing point of the solution is less. So that is called as depression, lowering, lowering of freezing point, depression in freezing point. Okay. So here you can see it in the graph. This is the freezing temperature of the solvent. So here you see freezing temperature of the solvent. After adding the solute, the solution temperature is decreased due to, by some units. And you see only the solvent is getting freezed. Here you see frozen solvent. Solution is not getting freezed. Only the solvent is getting solidified. It is getting freezed and frozen and it is getting solidified. Okay. Change is called as delta Tf. Final minus initials. Final is delta. I mean final is Tf0 and the initial is Tf. Okay. Higher value is Tf0 and lower value is Tf. And again the same relation. You have to relate it with the molality. And if you remove the proportionality sign here. You have to introduce a constant Kf because it is freezing point. There Kb, since it is a boiling point, and here you have to use F. And this Kf is called as molal depression constant. Okay, substitute everything. Everything will be same. Instead of Kb, you have to substitute Kf. Other things will remain same. Okay. Now coming to the fourth property. Shall I move on to the fourth property? Is everything what I have discussed so far is clear to both of you? Yes or no? And the other name, yeah, the other name for this molal depression constant is called as cryoscopic constant. Cryoscopic constant. Okay. Yeah, I will move on to the fourth property that is osmotic pressure. So the external pressure 
which is applied on the solution, this pressure, which is applied on the solution in order to stop the flow of the solvent into the solution. So the solvent is flowing. So to stop this flow, I have to give pressure here. OK, I have to give pressure on the solution uh, so that the solvent molecule flow will be stopped. OK, due to the solvent is passing through a semi-permeable membrane. Here, it is passing through a semi-permeable membrane, and that uh, flow will be so stopped on giving the pressure on the solution. And that is called as osmotic pressure. That pressure is equal to osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is denoted by the letter pi. And that pi is equal to the concentration into RT, concentration of the solution. Okay, And we know that concentration is equal to number of moles by volume. So I am substituting N by V. Here, the two denotes the solute. Always one denotes the solvent in all the cases. And the number two denotes the solute. So number of moles of the solute divided by volume of the solution into RT. OK? And if I want to replace the number of moles in terms of uh, mass, what I have to do? Number of moles is equal to mass by molar mass, right? Molar mass. So the number of moles of solute is equal to mass of the solute divided by the molar mass of the solute. So mass can be denoted by W. So we are getting the molar mass relation like this. Got it? So now we go, will go for the Van't Hoff factor. Van't Hoff factor is denoted by the letter I. It is equal to the number of particles after dissociation or association by number of particles before dissociation or association. So all those formulas, we can take a screenshot. And now the inclusion of this Van't Hoff factor. OK, if a molecule is getting associated or dissociated, the colligative property will change Okay, by a factor uh, of i. So what we have to do? We have to take all the formulas that we have studied in colligative property and multiply it by this i. Multiply it by the i Van't Hoff factor. OK, so this will give you the corrected value, modified value equation for the colligative property. Got it? So this is the theory part. And now we will solve the previous questions on je yeah, from this solutions topic okay shall we go will we go to the first question yeah it is to you on the screen yeah height of glucose must be dissolved in 100 gram of water to lower the vapor pressure by 0 0.20 mm of mercury and you have to assume the solution is dilute Solution is a diluted solution. Vapor pressure of pure water is given. Molar mass of glucose is given. So what we have to do? So glucose is glucose is the solute. Glucose is the solute. It's a component number two. And uh, water is the solvent. Component number one. Okay. So what is given? 100 gram of water. So the mass of water is given as 100 gram. To lower the vapor pressure, lower the vapor pressure. So what it is? It is nothing but the change in the vapor pressure. That is equal to 0 0.20 mm mercury. Solution is dilute. Vapor pressure of the pure water is 54. Vapor pressure. Pure. Pure means I, what I have to do? I have to put a knot here and it is the water's vapor pressure. So P1 naught is equal to 54.2 mm of mercury. And the molar mass of glucose, the molar mass of uh, glucose of glucose is equal to 180 gram per mole. So these are the given values. We have to substitute and get the weight of glucose. So we have to find out the weight. That is the mass of glucose we have to find out. So how we can find it is delta P by P naught is equal to number of moles of the solute divided by the number of moles of the solvent. OK, so just do this. And this you have to use for dilute solution. This relation is applicable for all the dilute because in dilute solution, water will be in excess. So the number of moles of uh, water will be more and of solute is very less. So we can neglect and get this. We can neglect the denominator and get this as in the denominator. 
now the change in the pressure is 0 0.20 and the water vapor component vapor pressure pure component vapor pressure is 54.2 which is equal to the number of moles of solute okay divided by the number of moles of solvent we can find number of moles of solvent it is equal to mass by molar mass right what is the given mass of solvent it is 100 and divided by molar mass of solvent solvent is water what is the molar mass of water 2 and 16 right so it is 18 so it will it will be in the denominator so denominator of the denominator goes to the numerator and from this if you solve you will get n2 value as yeah n2 will be 100 let me just write as it is into 0 0.2 divided by 54.2 and into 18 just let me keep this as it is now we we have to find out the mass we know that number of moles is equal to mass by molar mass and what is the mass here mass is equal to number of moles into molar mass just cross multiply so what is the number of moles it is 100 into 0 0.2 divided by 54.2 into 80 and what is the molar mass what is the molar mass of this uh, glucose it is 180 right so just substitute we are finding out the molar mass of the solute mass of the solute so everything put two so if you calculate this if you calculate this here we will get uh, 10 and if you multiply 100 200 divided by 54.2 so that will give you 3.69 gram okay will give you 3.69 gram in which option c is the correct answer students this is clear so just take this formula first of all take the given values and try to apply all the thing in the formula by using number of moles relation and this relation okay this is clear shall we move on to the next question so we have to find out the mass weight of the glucose w2 we are finding out good okay yes yeah coming to the second question in the depression of freezing point experiment uh, four statements are given we have to find out the correct statement. So let me give you the graph of this depression and freezing point. This is the graph. So what could be the, which among the following four statements could be the correct statement? Vapor pressure of the solution is less. So this is the vapor pressure of the solvent. That is, sorry. Yeah, this is the solvent temperature and this is the solution temperature, right? Vapor pressure of the solution is less than that of pure solvent. Yeah, it is less. You see here, that is this is the higher value and this is the lesser value, right? So statement A is correct. If statement A is correct, statement B is not correct, no? It is just the other way around. Vapor pressure of the solution is more. So it is not the correct statement. Only solute molecules solidify. No. Solute is not getting solidified. Who is getting solidified here? Solvent. Solvent is getting solidified. Solvent is getting. C option. Alima just, yeah. A is correct, but D is also correct. We just see there, only solvent molecule solidify. Only the liquid solvent molecule is getting solidified and it is getting freezing. No, frozen, no. So it is getting solidified at the freezing point. So D is correct. C is not correct, but D is correct. So the correct answer is option A. A and D only is the correct answer. Got it? Yes. Coming to the next question. A solution containing 2 gram of non-volatile solute. So I will take the solute. Solute is component 2. And uh, solvent is component 1. Okay. Solvent is component 1. So what is given? 2 gram. Gram means it is mass. Mass of the solute. So W2 is equal to 2 gram. And 20 gram of water. Water is the solvent. So its mass is 20 gram. And they boil at 
373.52. So both of them together, they are boiling. So what it is, it is the boiling temperature of the solution. So what is boiling temperature of the solution? Tb. It is equal to 373.52 Kelvin. Okay. And we have to find out the molecular mass of the solute. M, M2 we have to find out. And what else is given? Water boils at. Water is a solvent. And boiling temperature of water is given. So it is the pure component, right? So it is Tb0. 373 Kelvin. And Kb for water is also given here. We need to find out M2. So how we can find? How we can find M2? To find out M2, the formula is Kb into W2 into 1000 divided by delta Tb into W1 in gram. Got it? Now here we have Kb in the question, W2 in the question. Delta Tb is not there. W1 is there. So to find out delta Tb, the formula is Tb minus Tb0. So now substitute here these values here. It is 373.52 minus 373. So this will give you 0 0.52. This is the delta Tb value. Substitute this value here. So you'll get M2 is equal to what is Kb? It is 0 0.52. W2 is 2 gram and uh, into 1000 divided by delta Tb is 0 0.52 into w1 is 20 so just cancel out everything everything will get cancelled and m2 will be equal to 100 gram per mole so what is the value 100 gram per mole that is the molecular mass of the solute got it is this clear just straight straight substitution in this formula okay good now we will move on to one, question, one more question. The total pressure of the mixture, the total pressure of a mixture of non-reacting gases uh, in a vessel is 740 mm of mercury. So what is given here? Total pressure is given as 740. So P total, total pressure is equal to 740 mm of mercury. And... Uh, Gas uh, X is there and its mass is given. Gas Y mass is also given. The partial pressure of gas X we have to find out. Partial pressure of the gas X is we have to find out. Okay. Now, these are the masses. Masses of gas 1. Mass of gas 1. And this is the mass of gas 2. This is the molar mass of gas X and the molar mass of gas Y. Now, to find out the partial pressure... It is equal to the mole fraction of the gas into the total pressure. Mole fraction of the gas into the total pressure, right? So this is what we have seen, this formula. Now total pressure is given in the formula, but the mole fraction is not there. Now how to find out the mole fraction of uh, X? Okay, I'll take this gas as X, okay? It will be more appropriate. It will be more clear for you if I take this gas, especially as X. This is X. Now, if I want to find out the mole fraction of X, mole fraction is equal to number of moles of that component divided by total number of moles. We have two components, number of moles of X and number of moles of Y. Formula to find out the mole fraction is number of moles of that component divided by total number of moles. Okay. Now, what is number of moles? Mass by molar mass. Okay. Number of moles of X. So what is the mass of X? Mass of X is 0 0.6. Molar mass of X is given here. It is 20. It is in the numerator. Now again Nx only. This is the same value. Plus number of moles of Y. So the mass of Y is 0 0.45. And molar mass of Y in the question is given as 45. <laughs> Excuse me. So... When we solve this, we will get xx as 0 0.6 by 20 is equal to 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.03 plus 0 0.45 by 45 is 0 
is equal to 0 0.03 by 0 0.04 and this is equal to 0 0.75. So this is the value of the mole fraction. Now substitute this in this equation. So Px will be equal to 0 0.75 into total pressure is there now to 740. So it will be equal to 555 mm of mercury. Okay. 550 mm of mercury is the answer. 555 mm of mercury is the answer. Is this clear, Alima? You have any doubt in this? Yeah, you have a doubt? You have raised your hand, it seems. Yeah, tell me. Do you have any doubt? Yeah, dear, tell me. You have any doubt? You can ask. Just type it in the chat box. Now, these are the J equations. So in J, we will not have uh, options for some of the questions, right? A few questions are of uh, integer type. So these are those questions. Same type of question will be asked for NEAT. But they will give four options. That's all. Concept remains same. You are going to find out the uh, final answer. In uh, NEAT, they will give you four options. And here, for few questions, for four to five questions, there will not be, for uh, yeah, for 10 questions, there will not be options so we have 30 questions in need in that only 20 question contains option and 10 question doesn't contain option so these are those questions most of the physical chemistry questions will be asked in that integer type only where the question doesn't contains options in that part only you can find most of the physical chemistry questions so solution lesson is also one of the physical chemistry lesson no so all these questions are falling in that category and that's why it doesn't contain option all these are the this year question, 2023 question, which you can see on the screen. But in the need also the same question, same type, all the concepts are same. But there will be option. Finally, or you have to find out the answer. Got it? Yeah. What about organic chemistry? Organic chemistry, yeah. What is your doubt in organic chemistry? Organic chemistry questions, they will be uh, coming in the choose the correct answer uh, format only most of the questions of organic and inorganic they will fall in the question type uh, of they will fall in the mcq type only okay don't worry you are a neat student or j student alima <coughs> neat student okay all these are a uh, practice question for you okay so just learn how to solve all the neat question will also be from this pattern only Organic. Most of the questions for NEET will be from organic and some of the questions you can uh, find it out from uh, physical. But this year, portion is, uh, syllabus is getting reduced, no? So we, we cannot say that this many question will fall from this uh, organic or inorganic like that. We cannot uh, say. But 90% uh, of the uh, questions, 90% of the things say is that you will get the equal number of proportion of question from all the three branches of chemistry, from organic, inorganic, and physical. Okay, And also, uh, most of the physical chemistry lessons are not deleted. OK, only uh, most of the inorganic chemistry lessons are deleted. Organic chemistry lessons are there, and uh, only very few states of matter and those lessons are uh, deleted. Oh, you, you can expect n number of questions from physical chemistry also. So you cannot skip the physical chemistry questions in your exam. So just uh, take this as a revision class and learn how to solve the physical chemistry questions. OK, clear? Shall we move on to the next question? Yeah. Here is to you on the next question on the screen. A gaseous mixture of two substances, A and B, under a total pressure of 0 0.8 atmosphere is in equilibrium with an ideal liquid solution. The mole fraction of substance A is given in the vapor phase. And the mole fraction of the same A is also given in as 0 0.2 in liquid phase. The vapor pressure of pure A in 
atmospheric pressure unit is yeah how to do what we have to find out vapor pressure of the a we have to find out vapor pressure of a we have a and b two components we have to find out the vapor pressure of a so what are what else is given we have 0 0.5 uh, in the vapor phase and 0 0.2 in the liquid phase so for vapor phase let me take the mole fraction as ya it is equal to 0 0.5 and in the liquid phase, let me take this as EXA. Yes, let, let me use capital X, okay? So that you will not get confused. XA is equal to 0 0.2. And what else is given? The total pressure, P total. Total pressure is 0 0.8 atm, okay? Now, we know that from Dalton's law, PA is equal to YA into P total, right? So, it is equal to YA is 0 0.5 and total pressure is 0 0.8. So, PA is 0 0.4 ATM. Now, what we can do? We have to find out PA naught, right? The relation between PA and PA naught is PA is equal to PA naught into XA. Okay, XA. Now, we have to find out this PA naught. It is equal to PA divided by XA. What is PA? It is 0 0.4. 0 0.4 and XA is 0 0.2. And it is equal to PA naught. So when you substitute what you will get? You will get 2 ATM. So therefore, PA naught is equal to 2 ATM. Answer is two atmospheric pressure. Got it? So two formulas you are learning. One is this, which is used in the vapor phase, and the other one is the Raoult's law. Got it? Got it? Yes. You have a doubt? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Let's move on to one more question. Elevation and boiling point for 1.5 molar solution of glucose in water is 4 Kelvin. Elevation and boiling point is 4 Kelvin. That is, delta Tb is 4 Kelvin. Okay. The depression and freezing point, depression and freezing point, delta Tf for 4.5 molar solution of glucose in water is also equal to 4 Kelvin. The ratio of the molar elevation constant to molar depression constant. What is molar elevation constant? It is Kb and molar depression constant is Kf. So it is given here. So this ratio we have to find out. And we are also provided with the molar, molar solution. Okay. So one is 1.5 and the other one is 4.5. So let me take the ratio. We know that delta Tb is equal to kb into m and uh, delta tf is equal to kf into m got it so i have to take the ratio so delta tb by delta tf is equal to kbm divided by kfm okay so what is delta tb it is 4 delta tf is also 4 and kb we do not know kf also we do not know and the molality of uh, the solution of glucose, its elevation molal value is 1.5 and uh, for the other one it is 4.5, right? So when you take the ratio, you will get Kb by Kf, 4.4 four gets cancelled, 4.4 four four gets cancelled. Mm -hmm. And if you take this to the other side, you will have, uh, yeah, 4.5 divided by 1.5 you will have. And you will get the answer as 3. Okay. So the ratio, the ratio to Kb and Kf is equal to 3. So 3 is the answer. Clear? Yeah. Moving to one more question. An aqueous solution of uh, volume 300 centimeter cube contains 0 0.63 gram of protein. So 300 centimeter cube is the volume and uh, gram 0 0.63 is the gram that is mass mass of the protein. 
the osmotic pressure of the solution at 300 kelvin 300 kelvin is the temperature and the osmotic pressure is given as 1.29 m bar osmotic pressure means it is pi the molar mass of the protein is so what is molar mass m2 m2 we have to find out and r value is also given in terms of liter bar per kelvin okay so what is the relation we have we have pi is equal to crt so what is c number of moles by volume right so substitute n by v into rt and number of moles is equal to mass by molar mass so it is equal to the given mass of the solute divided by molar mass of the solute into volume is there and in the numerator rt is there now substitute all the values so what is the mass 0 0.63 what is the r value 0 0.083 and uh, what is the yeah very good very good dear it is the temperature is 300 Kelvin divided by M2 only we are going to find out and the volume what is the volume 300 centimeter cube right yeah one more thing we have to keep in mind you see it is osmotic pressure is 1.29 millibar osmotic pressure is this osmotic pressure value is given as 1.29 millibar what I can do I'll, I'll write the equation again here so here M2 will be equal to W2 divided by pi into V into R into T, right? So this is the relation. So from this, I'll uh, take, I'll take this, okay. And uh, here pi will be equal to yeah, M2, I'm sorry. Here M2 is equal to pi. What is the pi value? It is 1.29 millibar. Millibar means you have to multiply by 10 power minus 3. Because here R value is given in terms of bar, right? So milli means 10 power minus 3. So that you put into volume is 300 centimeter cube. 300 centimeter. We have to put it in meter. So what do you do? Again multiply by power minus 3. 10 power minus 3. So that will give you the answer in terms of meter cube. So this is the these are the values. When we solve everything, we will get 40535 gram per mole as the molar mass of the protein. Okay. So what I have done, change this millibar and put 10 power minus 3 in, term, in, in the place of milli. And in the place of centimeter cube, we have to... Substitute in meter cube, so multiply by 10 power minus 3 again. Got it? So the rest all things are same only, just direct substitution. Got it? Fine. We will move on to the next question. Lead storage battery contains 38% by weight of solution of H2SO4. Okay. The band of factor. So this 38% is the weight mass of H2SO4. The band of factor, band of factor means I, right? So I value is equal to 2.67 at this concentration. The temperature in Kelvin at which the solution in the battery will freezes. So we have to find out the temperature. We have to find out the freezing temperature of the solution. Tf we have to find out. Okay. Kf is given in the question. So what we can do? We know that delta Tf is equal to I into Kf into M, right? So what is the I value? 2.67 and Kf is 1.8 and molality. So what is molality? Molality is equal to number of moles of solute divided by mass of the solvent in mass of the solvent in kilogram, right? Number of moles is again equal to mass by molar mass of the solute. So the substitute, mass of the solute is 38, molar mass of the solute, solute is H2SO4. When you calculate the molar mass, what you will get? We have two hydrogen, one sulfur, sulfur is 32 and four oxygen we are having. So 16 into four, we have to do, right? 16 into four. So six, four is 24, four, five, six. So 64 we are getting. So it is uh, 40, no, no, not 40. It is uh, six, uh, 98. It is 98. 
molar mass of H2SO4 is 98. And the mass of solvent in kilogram, where is the mass of solvent? We have the mass of solvent. Yeah, we can find out the mass of solvent. Mass of the solvent, mass of H2O is equal to, we know the mass of uh, H2SO4, right? It is 38 percentage. So we can subtract 100 minus 38 will give you 62. So this is the mass of the solvent. So the mass of the solvent is 62. But in terms of kilogram, you have to divide this by 100. So take that to the numerator. It goes to the numerator. And when we solve this, we will get delta Tf is equal to 30.05. OK, now this is the change in temperature. We have to find out the freezing point of the solution. So the freezing point of the solution will be equal to, OK, 273 minus delta Tf. 273 minus delta Tf. So freezing point of the solvent minus delta Tf. So it is equal to 273 minus 30.05. It is approximately equal to, it is approximately equal to 243 Kelvin. Freezing point is equal to 243 Kelvin. Clear? Yeah. So here we are using this delta Tf is equal to Tf naught minus Tf relation. So from this relation only we are getting this freezing point of the solution we are finding. Got it? Yes. Now we will go with uh, one more last question for this session because it is already time. So we will do uh, one question. So the question is 1.80 gram of solute A was dissolved in 62.5 centimeter cube of ethanol. So this is the mass of the solute and this is the volume of ethanol. And the freezing point of the solution is also given. Tf is also given. Molar mass of the solute we have to find out. Ethanol freezing point, density of ethanol is given, everything is given. Freezing point depression constant is also given in the question. Okay. This is Kf. Okay, it is also given. So what we can do? We need the molar mass. So what is the formula to find out the molar mass? Kf into W2 into 1000 divided by delta Tf into W1. Right. Now we have Kf in the question. Mass of the solute is also there, 1.8 thousand. Delta Tf we don't have. And also W1 we don't have. So these two we have to find out. So how we can get? We have density, right? Density is equal to mass by volume. So from this, what is mass? I will write mass as weight, OK, W. It is density into volume. What is the density of ethanol? It is 0 0.80. And the volume of ethanol is 62.5. So the answer will be 50 gram. So this is the mass of the solvent. One. Okay. Ethanol is the solvent and that is the mass. So I can substitute 50 in place of W1. And coming to delta. Delta Tf is equal to Tf0 minus Tf. Right. So what is Tf0? Freezing point of ethanol is Tf0. Pure solvent. Ethanol. So 156 minus. And the solution temperature, Tf is equal to 155.1. And here you will get 0 0.9. So we have found out these two values also. Just substitute here. Kf is 2. Mass of the solvent is 1.8 into 1000 divided by delta Tf 0.9. And W1 is 50. So this will give us 80 gram per mole as the answer. So the molar mass of the solute is 80 gram per mole. Okay. So in all the polycative properties, study the two, two formulas that we are having. So this formula and the molar mass formula you will have for each uh, colligative property. So concentrate in that. Got it? Clear? So with this question, I will close the today's session. It's already time. 
thank you for listening the lecture my dear students so i will meet you in the next session okay thank you thank you so much take care